I would like to start off by saying, I use Sketchbook Pro religiously at this point. I am practically engaged with the software, and only think of other softwares as strangers or acquaintances. That being said, you probably shouldn't use it for webtoons. Welcome to Edenwick, a creative knowledge center of exploration where I share my long and dangerous art journey, along with some lessons and tips that I learned along the way. If you like art and art related videos, don't be afraid to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I'm hoping together we can build an art community that promotes growth and creativity for beginner and intermediate artists, so we can help each other transcend and reach greatness. Now, on to the video. You're probably thinking, if this video is about using Sketchbook Pro to make a webtoon, then why are you telling us not to? The reason I say this is because while it is possible to use Sketchbook in order to make a webtoon, it has no features built into it that are webtoon specific. If you don't already use the program, you may be better off using something else. Clip Studio Paint seems to be the most common amongst webtoon artists along with the great and powerful Photoshop. As such, there are tons of videos out there on how people use them in order to produce a webtoon. However, there are not many videos out there for those who are using Sketchbook Pro, and thus, this video was born. Originally, I didn't think that using Sketchbook Pro for webtoons was a smart idea, even for someone who uses the program. It didn't seem to have any tools that would benefit me throughout the process. But after further investigation, I am now convinced that Sketchbook Pro users could create a webtoon completely with just the one software. In fact, I personally found it a lot easier to use than Photoshop. First, let's talk about some of the negatives I feel the program has when it comes to making webtoons or comics specifically. From what I can tell, for as long as I've been using this program, there is no snap to grid function, and nothing that would help with lining up objects on the canvas. If you want to line anything up accurately, you will have to do it on your own. This is not too much of an issue. There are many points where an artist has to use their own eye for accuracy, but when it comes to panel setup, something like a snap to grid function would be helpful. Another negative that is simply an inconvenience would be the lack of an assets library of sorts. To my knowledge, both Photoshop and Clip Studio have a library of assets that can be built up or used repeatedly throughout a project and after. While Sketchbook has a library of brushes, I have yet to see anything that would allow me to save and import pre-made assets such as backgrounds, effects, and speech buckles, and definitely no library of 3D models to pose in perspective. One of the biggest problems, though, that I have with Sketchbook is the inability to open up more than one file at a time. Anytime you open a new file, the one you were on closes, making it impossible to work on multiple parts of a project at the same time. These are the main problems I feel would present themselves while making a webtoon in Sketchbook Pro. But of course, as a person uses it, they may find new problems of their own or become used to it altogether. As someone who uses Sketchbook on the regular, I find it easy to work around these issues. Combined with the features they do have, I feel it is completely possible and justifiable to work in this program. The primary benefit to using Sketchbook Pro, in my opinion, is its brush library and the ability to easily make new and unique brushes. I personally find it a lot easier to make brushes in Sketchbook than I do in Photoshop. It is also a lot easier to understand and change the behavior of each brush. With that, you can make an assortment of pattern brushes, inking brushes, painting brushes, and sketching brushes that work well for you and your process. Tools to keep in mind include a ruler, an ellipse, a French curve, a perspective grid that includes one point, two point, 
three-point and fisheye perspective, and a symmetry tool that can go horizontal, vertical, and radial. Of the recent things I have discovered, they have a steady stroke tool which allows for less messy strokes by having the mark drag behind the cursor. They also have a predictive stroke tool that will straighten the line to a smoother version of itself after you make the mark, and even shape drawing tools that take the brush you have equipped and create the outline of a shape with it, which can be great for making panels and speech bubbles. With that, I believe it shouldn't be too hard to make a webtoon if you know what you're doing. So I'm sure you can imagine how hard it is for me to be doing this right now. Nevertheless, let's talk about the process. The first thing I did was to make a template to use when making the thumbnails for the webtoon, both physically and digitally. I mostly used the physical one, but in making the digital one I was able to get my file dimensions to do the rough sketch on. What most people seem to do is set up a document with multiple rows of canvases to draw on so they can do their entire comic in one file. Others might make one super long canvas and work on that for the same reason. In order for me to focus, I have decided to work on a canvas four pages in length at a time in order to get the roughs done and will move everything onto a longer canvas in the end for the inking stage. With the canvas set up, I take the thumbnails I have prepared and size them up to fit, rearranging things and spacing things out as needed. Originally, I did not know about the shape tool and just used the ruler to draw out all my boxes as accurately as I could. I also exported and sent the files to my phone so I could see how they would scroll. I am currently in the process of sketching everything out over the thumbnails to be as accurate to the final result as possible. To me, the sketching phase is the hardest part when done right. You do not want to wait until inking to make any final decisions. Inking should be one of the easiest parts because all the decisions were made in the sketching phase. The better the sketch, the better the inks will be. For this project I am using blue to sketch people with and will use green to sketch the final environments with. This way I can keep track of what's what. I have used the perspective tool to make a few backgrounds but had to stop since I didn't really know what the locations my characters were in looked like. You don't have to do this, but for the sake of time I had to step back and create a few environments in 3D so that I can be consistent and speed up the sketching process. I'm still currently in the sketching process though, and don't want to try and talk about things I haven't done yet. So in the second part of this video, I hope to wrap up production on the comic process in Sketchbook. But until then, I hope this video was helpful to at least one of you out there. If not, let us know in the comments what could be done better. And if you know of other ways we can level up our art skills, let us know that as well. Also, while you're down there, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can see what I do next. But until we meet again, I would just like to say, welcome to Eatonwood.